Friday afternoon, Coach Sharon Versip. What could be better? Well, Kyle too, but uh, <laughs> we're glad that you're all here. Golden Black Live, special 1:30 start uh, uh, for, to the show, and and the coach has practice at 2:30. But what better way to warm up before practice and joke around with us and find out how we <laughs> how we uh, myself fumble around for the last 15 minutes? But the show is on the air. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And. Uh, it's great outside. It's uh, Halloween. Couldn't be any better for us to keep practicing and a couple, couple weeks away from our season. And if you were going out for Halloween, what would you go out as? Dressed up like this as Coach Versip. So that's what I would do. It's easy. It keeps me warm. There you go. There you go. Well, you got to be pretty excited about getting the season started. I mean, after the year you guys had last year, I think you you said it once and then said it a, a thousand times, I think, yeah. that you like this team's energy, especially mm -hmm. when you compare it to, to what happened sort of down the stretch for you last year. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you're in the business about 24 years, you're going to have a couple bumps in the road, and, and last year was. And um, I think sometimes, um, you know, Alan and I were just talking about every team's different, you know, and that's part of the piece of the puzzle that you constantly are doing, and that's exciting about coaching. But the energy that we have, um, you know, we've lost two players, but then brought in four. And, you know, we feel that we have good senior leadership, but the energy and the fire and the team camaraderie and caring about each other more than about themselves has been a huge, huge difference. You guys have been, you know, Purdue's been, been uh, at the top of the Big Ten for a long time, so people are maybe happy at some times to be able to take shots at you when, mm -hmm. when they may perceive that you're down. Mm -hmm. uh, working your way back up, do you think, and you've been in this experience just from as a player and a coach, you know, is it harder to climb that ladder back up or is it harder to stay at the top? Um, I think it depends on the circumstances. I, I think staying at the top can be harder because you always want to be uh, the hunter, not the yeah. hunted, yeah. so you stay <laughs> hungry. Uh, but, you know, our conference has changed. Yeah. When we signed up, we Nebraska wasn't in, Maryland Rutgers wasn't in. You, you know, three so, good teams. There. Yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, all of us talk about that. So, you know, you're all, we were always one of the, you know, first to five. And now if you're in the top seven or eight, that's a great season, and people don't see it that way. Yeah. And, um, and they should because our league has gotten, obviously, a lot better. Um, Adeline, Mar Maryland, and Rutgers, and uh, Nebraska has been a, a great, great fit. You know, so, I mean, you get hungrier and you see where you need to go. And now you see the competition because it's been right in front of you. So uh, I think when you're the hunted, it's very, very hard to stay there. Uh, but all of a sudden, when you take a little bump in the road, um, it wakes you up. It makes you look at yourself innerly. You know, for me as a coach and our staff, you have to do things a little bit different. Times have changed. Kids are different. Mm -hmm. You know, what can we do and what makes them tick to get back to where we need to be? You guys have to, I don't know if relearn how to win is the right phrase, mm -hmm. but just get that feeling back again. Because there were so many games last year, especially in the middle of the season, that you, you just couldn't make the plays down right. the stretch. And, and to be able to get back to that point where, mm -hmm. you know, the, the kids feel confident about their ability to make plays. How do you sort of coach that in the preseason mm -hmm. or, or get them ready for those situations again? I mean, you can try to do that in practice, but practice is one thing. The pressure is different when your uniform's on, the fans are screaming, and it gets intense, and you got foul trouble and those type of things. So, you know, we did feel we did that pretty well because we went overseas. Right. If we didn't have that, then I'd be yeah. like, well, I'm not really sure. <laughs> you know, because yeah. um, you have to – I mean, you know, and, and the football team right now is the same way. They win that game, it just changed momentum. Mm -hmm. There's like one play – or one game and it just changes really the mojo of your team and you know with us when we went overseas we had tough games yeah i mean we got down and we had to prove that we could fight back who was making the shot who was making the defensive stop did we make free throws we made those plays that we didn't prior to is that going to happen every game this year no i mean <laughs> it, it is what it is but at least we've had that dress rehearsal yeah you know, and I, we were in Indianapolis for an event a couple of weeks ago, and talking about uh, and talking to April about that the experience of April Wilson and the opportunity to go to uh, Italy and play, and that you didn't play in the Italian teams. What did you, what did your team pick up? Because you talked about the German team being uh, more like an American team mm -hmm. in some ways, but you, you saw some different styles. What did, what do you think you most gained outside of the camaraderie? And from a, from a playing standpoint, what what get, what'd you get most out of that? Defense, yeah, toughness. A grit yeah you know those were the three and and we saw results we always talk about you can play hard and work hard but if there's no production then what's the point you know yeah. and we have to enjoy the process while we're doing it so I mean those were the big keys when we you know went away is that 
we played great defense and we got so many steals. I mean, April had like five a game. Ashley had like four a game. Keys had like three a game. Those have to carry over. And defense does win because you're not always going to shoot great. Uh, so I think, you know, those are the intangibles that we got back to doing is that we're playing together and we're sharing the basketball. You don't have huge turnover in personnel, but but what your little bit of turnover in personnel does is it changes sort of the makeup of your team, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you go from so much of a post-oriented yeah. team to, to guard-oriented. How, you know, how has that sort of changed the approach to the season? Well, I think you have to win with guard play. Yeah. You have to have players that can score. You have to have players that know how to pass the ball. You have to have players that understand the whole whole game. And our shooting struggled last year, and we're trying to always go inside because that was our strength. Well, now I think our guards are our strength, and I also think our four spot is our strength because we're playing a different system. Yeah. You know, we're very young at the five spot. Uh, you have Erica Moore, who's a sophomore, didn't have a lot of playing experience, Bree Horrocks, and now Nora Kiesler. So with them, they have to play against bigger size teams, mm -hmm. uh, which they will. And we played against 6'8 and 6'9 overseas, yeah. so that was great for us. Uh, but I feel that our guard, one through three, core is very, very strong. And now you have Dominique McBride, yeah. you have Tori and Bridget that are going to play the stretch four. And... Dom, I mean, Dom doesn't have a lot of playing time. She has the skill set mm -hmm. and just knows the game. Uh, but then you have Tori, who's a fifth-year senior, and Bridget, who's playing a different position, but they've played and they've had experience. So, you know, we're, we're expecting a lot from that four spot this year. Speaking of those freshmen, all the love you show them on a daily basis of practice. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I've heard, you know, it takes some getting used to, no matter who you are coming yeah. in, and because uh, you're, you have a different style from the high school coach, mm -hmm. you're, you're demanding, but, you're, but that's, that's the nature of the beast. Does it take them, do you find most freshmen, it takes them uh, to a particular time until you start playing games, do you feel comfortable, mm -hmm. or how do, how do you, or is, is everybody different on that front? Every single person's different. It, it does not have anything to do with, it's a class that molds together. This yeah. class has bought in and want to do everything for the team to make them better, and they don't care about themselves. So that in itself has made us already better. Um, and you, you can see great strides in that. Um, Nor is the one that has consistently practiced, has gone through things. She didn't do much this summer, but since August, when we came back from Italy, right. she's had every rep, has been doing everything. Dom and Murph have been in and out, whether it's mm -hmm. been a, you know, a sickness, mm -hmm. could be an injury or something like that. So Nora right now is a little bit above everybody else because she's had that consistency and understands things and hasn't really missed much time. Yeah. Um, so I see that. But that doesn't mean the kids can't come in and make a big impact. Dom's an impact player, so is Murph. You know? But they just haven't had the reps, and we'll see what happens. And it could take longer, or you never know. You'll, you, you'll, see, is, you'll see it when we see it. <laughs> yeah. Is it harder for fives, though, at, at, at this level, too, to, to come in and make that impact? I mean, you know, Bree obviously has, took her some time last year mm -hmm. to, get, to get used to it, and Nora's going to – they're going to get a chance to, to do oh, yeah. some things and prove themselves. Is, there, is, there a, is it a longer runway for them just because of size and, and being accustomed to this, this uh, speed of play, or is that not a fair statement? Well, I don't, I don't know if it's any leeway. It's just whoever's going to produce in that yeah. spot. I mean, and that's the spot we need production in. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's the question mark. Yeah. And they know that, so they're hungry for it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I was like, I mean, my eyes would be big, yeah. and I'd be like, okay. Yeah. You know, but, they are, but they'll be able to share that time because it's a fast game when you're playing against LSU and Louisville and Boston College. And, you know, they got to play against the big teams. They're not going to always play against our non-conference teams that are a little bit smaller. That's just... You know, Erica will probably play more mm -hmm. against them. So, but Nora and Bree are very cerebral. Yeah. And Nora is a great facilitator, more than a scorer. And Bree is more of a scorer than a facilitator. So they both bring something a little different. So that's exciting. And then Erica is just power. Yeah. She can dominate. She can get people down deep, and she does some really nice things for us. You had your secret scrimmage yes. uh, <laughs> on Saturday against Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. How did that go? Um, you know, I thought it went very well. We wanted to go against a very quick opponent that had really four guards, um, you know, a little uh, smaller in size down low. And, you know, we, we felt like we did some very, very good things. You know, we were able to score a lot of points, which was great, trying to, to limit specific things. Rebounding, we said, is our weakness, and we have to do a better job with mm -hmm. that. It still was a weakness, you know, and it will be all year. I mean, you just you can't yeah. be great now. You don't want to be great now. You want to see that vast improvement and you know the offensive rebounding and defensive rebounding 
those are two areas that we have to do a lot better collectively. Uh, but I liked it. You know, I, I like what they showed us. I mean, they did a lot of different things defensively that we hadn't gone against in practice, you know, and mm -hmm. we ended up finding, you know, making adjustments and doing well. So you always like those opportunities where you can do game situations against you know, other opponents, whether it's out of bounds plays, last second opportunities, and just playing somebody else is so much nicer than going against <laughs> each other for such a long time. And, and right. you have new rule situations yeah. that you have to get used to. And a lot of people might not know it's crazy. As, much, as much as we do, but I mean, it's going to be a different game. Uh, what, four 10 minute quarters? Mm -hmm. And we can go through all these things. No right. more one and ones, which, I mean, that's going to be very different. Five team fouls per quarter before you shoot free throws. Mm -hmm. How how big a change do you think it's going to be? Do you can you can you judge it yet? How big a change it will be? I can't judge it, but I mean we were able to play three games with yeah. those rules except the twenty four yeah. second shot clock. Um, I mean it's all for the offense. They're not rewarding defensive effort at all. So that's hard when you're a defensive yeah. coach, and a lot <laughs> yeah. of people are. I mean I'm an offensive coach, but it's you, you're flipping. It's like you're spending so much more time on offense because. Yeah. Defensively, they're taking so much away from you. You touch somebody, it's a foul. But down low, you can do anything you want to until they catch mm. the ball. So, um, so we'll see. Uh, but I, uh, the one-on-one -on -one situation. I mean, that just, you know, at the end of the game, you're trying to make them miss. So you have an opportunity. Now you have two free throws. There's no pressure, <laughs> you know, yeah. anymore. And so it's going to be hard. You know, all of a sudden it's a six-point game. Do you keep fouling? Yeah. But if you don't then you're just going to let the, the clock run out. So it, it, it's, um, it's all strategy. You have to, the point guards really have to understand the game. Coaches have to be at another level. And then sideline out of bounds, offense and defense has got to come to another level because under the minute mark, you call a timeout, it'll advance like WNBA rules. I'm trying to figure out whether, does it, maybe you can help here. Does it help or hurt good free throw shooting teams? Um, I don't know, and I think that's a stat that you'll see. You know, if it's one on one, I don't understand why. Well, would. because you, in, in theory, you, if, if a team in the first quarter got to five fouls, you started shooting free throws. If they got to seven, you'd be shooting free throws for about thirteen minutes. Okay. If you're a good free throw shooting team, that could right. help you. But it resets again to start the second quarter. Maybe they don't foul as much, and you don't get to the line. So I, yeah, and I, I don't know if it helps. I can't can't decide <laughs> whether because you've generally been a good free throw shooting team. So I'm not sure whether it's good for you or bad for you. And I think that that is a stat that we'll have this conversation hopefully <laughs> in February and we'll be looking at because we don't know. But if yeah. you're a good free throw shooting team and there's you get the five fouls that, you know, and you're just going to be shooting two, you just want to attack the hole as much as you can right. because it depends on how they're calling the game and they yeah. don't want you to play defense this year. Is it going to speed it up in the end? Is that, I mean, that's part of that's part two. Of the goal. I mean, in theory it will, but it may not. It depends how these teams choose to foul down the stretch, right? So. Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's going to speed it up. I really don't. I mean, they want an entertainment value. If there's a dead ball, you can play music. If there's something yeah. else going on, I mean, it's more entertainment. But they just want more offense, but I don't see it speeding the game up. Yeah. And then you also said, I remember in, in Indy, we were talking about how the, the timeout rules is you're not going to allow you know fans may be yelling at you because they don't know the rules because I mean you almost yeah. need a primer on this this whole deal for for everybody including mm -hmm. myself to make sure I understand you know why the coach isn't talk calling timeout because you can't you have some yeah. limitations down the stretch right I have to explain that well I mean you can use all your timeouts but you need some in the second half yeah. you know so I mean the media timeouts at five minutes well if somebody's blitzing you and it's eight oh or ten oh yeah. and I use a timeout at eight minutes that's the media timeout. So the other coach might not call a timeout at all, and you can play eight straight <laughs> minutes. That happened over in Italy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and there was times, I mean, they just kept playing. There was no break. So yeah. it's also a different type of conditioning because the kids are just used to always yeah. having three, three and a half, or four mm. minutes they were going to have a break. So it was different. And I kept looking over to Tanner. I'm like, do I have a timeout? Do I not have a timeout? Do they have a timeout? I mean, it, it was just a constant, as a coach, you have to really understand what you're looking at. and. You know, so people may be screaming, yelling, well, I can use two timeouts in the first and the second quarter. Then I only have one, the third and fourth, you know, and it's still at the end of the game, what happens? They're always like, why do you guys don't use your timeouts? And then at the end of the game, you need to use every timeout yeah. in order yeah. to get those game situations because it always comes down to the last minute of the game. Yeah. And that's what's interesting, though, in that, that the, the dealing with the runs of basketball is going to be hard So from that standpoint. So to get back to, to where you want to be, what mm -hmm. do you need to happen this year? Um, Stay healthy. This will be a, a big key. I mean, you're going to have some, but you can't have like three major players or starters, yeah. you know, out. Um, stay as healthy as we can be. 
um, continue to get better defensively and rotation, uh, have be a great running team. We've got to be able to shoot the ball outside exceptionally well mm -hmm. um, to develop then our inside game. Um, we've got to get to the foul line, and then we just we got to take care of the ball. Our goal is 15 turnovers, um, and we're, we're trying to push it as much as we can. Uh, I think our kids are making a little bit better decisions. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to limit our post opportunity to make a lot of mistakes because um, that's where a lot of our turnovers were uh, last year. Um, and then rebounding. I mean, we have to get better at rebounding. I mean, yeah. it's just preached every day, you know. Um, but every facet of our game needs to improve. But we just need – you get that confidence back, then it just becomes contagious. So uh, I think you'll see a different different style and, and just different brand and just a different group that you'll love that you saw eight years before. Mm -hmm. yeah, good. Any, and we're down to a couple of minutes left. But a question we get on recruiting that I – saw asked about what are the little things you look at when you're whether you're going to AU tournaments or watching kids play high school basketball without giving trade secrets mm -hmm. away it's little things that you watch for that, that can get that you can almost guarantee or at least improve the opportunity to have that good fit when they get here what do you watch for kids that are when they're in high school in terms of uh, maybe body language or yeah. whatever I'm always interested in what what are the little things that you see outside of the, outside of skill well, because everybody can play basketball. Everybody's, you know, everybody's going after the same kids in, in the country. But the biggest thing is their character, like you said. You know, it's the character. How do they handle themselves? Are they leaders? How are their nonverbals? Are they looking up into the stands to their parents for coaching, <laughs> not paying attention to the coach or the people on the floor? Another thing we look for is you're a very good player, but are you making others around you better? Mm -hmm. Or is it all about you? So I always say there's good players and great players. Good players, you know, they do their thing, they do their job, they're happy. But great players make everyone around them better in every facet of the game, whether it's defense, whether it's offense, elevating their teammates um, if they're communicators. And that's probably the biggest weakness of any high school kid. Mm -hmm. Kids do not talk yeah. all on the floor and they do not communicate. They can't text and dribble at the same that's time. Right. That's right, exactly. Time, so that's, that's, so that's the biggest weakness. And then they have to be great academically. I mean, you know, so I mean, you can do the basketball and then you got to look at the academics and then you go and, and watch the rest. But they don't understand that Purdue's academics are, um, you know, it's tough to get in. And then when you get in, it's tough when you're here. Those dang millennials. I mean, they're going to figure out a way before you're done coaching where they can do that. They'll have something on, like, maybe it's the, the uh, Google Glasses or whatever where they can do that and communicate that way. I, maybe not in basketball. I don't know. So, Coach, thanks so much for your time. And, and good luck at uh, the start of this season. And, well, throughout the entire season, you're going to have a, a uh, busy November and mm -hmm. December. It's amazing how many games seem to get played before the Big Ten even starts. But it's going to give you a good look to what kind of team you're going to have. It will. And thanks so much for letting us continue to share our story about women's basketball. We, we enjoy it very much. Tanner, thank you for making the trip out, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, have, watching the Purdue Boilermakers through a, what promises to be an interesting season this year for Purdue. So we'll be back, and, and for segment two, we could have the coach sit here and talk and dissect football <laughs> with us as well. I'm sure she would do an excellent job, but we'll bring Stacy Clarity out on to do that as well, and for segment two of Golden Black Live. <laughs>